as uh, Ms. Weber said, uh, I'm going to go through uh, the projects in some detail so that everyone here is on the, on the same page and understands what the board has been discussing. I'm just going to mention very quickly that I happen to have two phone conversations uh, earlier this evening, uh, just as, as coincidence would have it. One was with the former superintendent who was at the helm uh, when the district approved its last referendum in 2005. And then I also fielded a call from uh, a resident in town, a longtime resident, whose children have uh, moved through our system uh, some time ago. Uh, and she was calling to express some concerns about what I'm about to present to you. Uh, and I ended that conversation with her by saying that uh, I truly appreciated the time she took to call me. Uh, I even more appreciated uh, the support she's given to the district over uh, the course of her time in this community. Uh, and that regardless of the outcome, whether the board moves forward, whether the board doesn't move forward, if it moves forward, if she is supportive of these projects or puts up a big sign and says it's the worst idea in the world, uh, regardless of that, my appreciation and respect for her wouldn't change. And I just mentioned that to say that uh, you know, we're all at different stations in life. Uh, we all have different priorities. We all have different beliefs about what might be best for the community, for our own families, for the school district. Uh, and I, I'm just hopeful that whatever deliberations <coughs> take place tonight and in the future, uh, we keep that in mind. Uh, because we all, uh, we just have all way, ways, different ways of seeing the, the world and seeing things. So uh, I certainly appreciate that as superintendent, and uh, I uh, take seriously the various viewpoints that I'll hear about uh, different topics. So as Ms. Weber said, uh, I have two purposes really. The first is to uh, share information with you, provide some context, uh, and then also then to turn uh, the mic back over to the Board of Education so that they can hear uh, you. And I'll begin by, by just saying, interestingly, I think, um, that our school facilities were all uh, constructed some time ago. And in particular, uh, if you think to yourself, uh, back to the year 2000, the time span between 2000 and today, 14 years, uh, is the exact amount of time that every building in our district was built, uh, save uh, Southern Boulevard School, which was constructed in 1928. So, amazingly, I, I can't really fathom the, the kind of discussions that must have been taking place over a 14-year period when five whole school buildings uh, were built. And that's characteristic and reflective of what was happening in the United States at the time. Uh, that was the post-World War II baby boom. Uh, the population was growing, uh, suburbia was growing in particular, and Chatham was uh, you know, front and center uh, when you think about it from the perspective of when schools were built. Uh, that also means that the average age of our buildings is 64 years. And that's significant because our Board of Education and certainly our administration, uh, we try to evaluate our facilities on an ongoing basis. We try to make choices about what we need to improve, what we need to invest in, what we need to upgrade and modernize just as a result of the passage of time. Uh, and when you have buildings that uh, are on average 64 years old, as you can imagine, there is a lot to take into account. It's also interesting, I, I was trying to think of another school district that I might be familiar with in which every school building predates the existence of the district itself. Uh, but that's the situation that we're in. Uh, this school district was formed in 1988. Uh, the first year uh, of operation was 1988-1989 school year. Uh, when Chatham Borough and Chatham Township were uh, under one consolidated school district. Uh, and so our facilities uh, are a little bit older than the district itself. And on top of that, there's another dynamic that has been in play. Uh, so I'm a homeowner, my home was built in the 1960s, and uh, you know, I think about the fluorescent tile in my bathrooms and the things that I'd like to uh, upgrade as a homeowner. Uh, but there's something that the school district has been contending with that I don't have to contend with as a homeowner. And that is uh, extraordinary growth in enrollment. Uh, so since 1989-90, that was the year that I had uh, access readily. That was the year I had uh, at my fingertips in terms of, uh, sorry about that, in terms of uh, statistics. The enrollment in the schools is up about 90%, uh, which is really, it's amazing, and of course it presents challenges to us. 
And even more interesting is that if you take a look at those figures, the, the uh, growth in enrollment over that 25 year or so period, if you compare it to the growth in uh, the population of the two municipalities, Chatham Borough and Chatham Township, uh, it's really kind of interesting that the rate of growth in the school district has many times over exceeded the rate of growth in the overall population in the borough and township. Uh, so we've had to deal with something internally in the district, and of course much of this time predates my uh, tenure in the school district. Uh, but we've had to contend with a, a rate of growth that's really been um, placing pressure on our facilities and our programs and so forth. And I think that there are three ways, there's a, there's a typo up there, I apologize. Three ways that the district has responded um, to this type of enrollment pressure. The building of new classrooms, the improvements in library and media centers that you see uh, in the buildings, and then improved athletic facilities. As I look back uh, and I walk through the schools, these are the, the three main areas of focus, I believe, uh, that the district has, um, has demonstrated over the time that enrollment has increased so much. So classroom space, this is obvious. Every single school in the district has had classroom additions. Some of them have had multiple classroom additions. The high school is on number three just since I've been in the school district since 2001. Uh, so all of our facilities have been expanded and obviously it's, it's easy to see the reason why. When you have more students coming to your school building, you need a place to educate them. Classrooms are the, the top of the list uh, in terms of what you need to provide. Secondly, uh, every media center in the, in the school district has been either built anew since 1988-89 uh, or has been improved, uh, including the middle school all the way down at the end of the hall, uh, the media center rather, all the way down at the hall uh, here in the middle school. And then finally, <clears throat> we've, made a lot of we've, we've made a lot of improvements to our athletic facilities. So uh, early on in the 90s, there was a gymnasium built at Southern Boulevard School. Then we had two gyms built at Milton and Washington as a result of our So then we had two other uh, gymnasiums built in 2006. And then finally, of course, we had turf fields installed at two of our, of our athletic facilities, where at the time, and I was in the district at this time, uh, the fields were getting such use that they were uh, wearing out and there wasn't enough um, uh, you know, grass in, in spots and so on and so forth. So my point being that we've had um, priorities, I think, reflected in the kind of construction that we've taken on uh, over the course of, of the past 25 or so years. Uh, and much of that, not all of it, but much of it certainly was funded uh, through other referenda. Uh, one in 95. There was one that was rejected in 98, but the Board of Education at the time turned around quickly and put forward another one in 1999, and then finally uh, the last one in 2005. So that brings us to today, and the projects that we are considering, or that the Board of Education, I should say, is considering uh, going forward uh, with. And uh, at the, the first ones, at least I'll talk about, are our auditorium spaces. And I know that one question uh, is why, why, why we need to invest in auditorium spaces. Uh, aside from the fact that I think this has been an area uh, that we have not directed attention to over the course of time, uh, like we have with athletic facilities and classrooms and uh, media centers, uh, both of our current auditoriums have some age on them. So the one that we're standing in was built in 1958, part of the original construction of what the time was Chatham High School. Uh, the seating capacity is about 830. So there were 511 students in the building at the time. Uh, and when they built this building, they did so deliberately for a bigger population than was present in the school. At the high school, uh, when it was built in 1962, there was no auditorium. There was a multi-purpose room in the current cafeteria. That is where uh, productions and assembly programs took place. Uh, but about a dozen years later, they began plans to uh, construct a new auditorium. They did so in 1976. And similarly, uh, the seating capacity there was 720, which would have fit the faculty and the entire school uh, in, the, in the facility at once. So one of the facilities is about 40 years old, and the other is about 60 years old. So the auditoriums, um, Aside from the fact that they um, 
they're, they're aged and they, and they need to be addressed. They also touch a, quite a sliver of our student population. Uh, we have uh, a very strong performing arts program. Uh, the numbers there, 1,600 students total in the district, do not represent just extracurricular you know, productions like the musical or the fall play at the high school or the, the uh, big production here in the middle of the winter, but also the students who take a chorus or music or a band or orchestra rather. Uh, so we have quite a, a number of students who in some way or another are touched by the performing arts and at some point or another find themselves uh, in auditorium spaces. And keep in mind, of course, that Lafayette Avenue School shares the auditorium with the high school. Uh, so some of the problems that we have uh, in these sites, uh, aside from microphones that are faulty at times, <laughs> is that um, all the furniture is original, essentially. Uh, the carpeting is original at the high school, even though it has suffered from leaky roofs and so forth for a number of years. Um, the tile that is beneath our feet has got asbestos uh, plastic in it and needs to be abated. Um, there's limited seat seating capacity for larger productions like the musicals at the high school that uh, sell out on occasion or regularly. Uh, and just overall, the, the one consideration is that there's a lack of space. There's a lack of space to build sets. There's a lack of space to store sets. There's a lack of space to store seating. Uh, and that is less than ideal for us, especially with the size student body that we have. Uh, and just as a corollary to that, um, we've lost space in and around our auditorium. So I was just you know, thinking how uh, five or six years ago, the wall behind the, the, the stage here um, used to be uh, a shop with a garage with storage. It's three classrooms now that we converted a bunch of years ago because we were trying to contend with enrollment growth. So we've actually lost space from the original site, uh, or the original facility, uh, when it was built in 1958 in this building. And since we're not at the high school, I'll just you know, point out a few photographs that many of you've seen, I'll go quickly. Uh, but the seats at the high school, uh, after 40 years of having teenagers sit in them, uh, are beginning to break down. Some of them are held together by uh, duct tape at this point. Of course, uh, they don't manufacture these exact seats anymore, so it's not so easy to uh, just replace the backs. Uh, some of them are held right, broken. Uh, the fabric on the wall, there is acoustical fabric at the high school site, uh, unlike here, uh, but that's torn. Uh, of course, when these facilities were built, there wasn't uh, the state of technology that we have today, so wiring and uh, internet and things like that were not um, you know, taken into consideration. And again, the sets are built on stage with power tools and the like. Uh, around the hallways over at the high school too, uh, there isn't any place to store things like a piano, which is, you can see on the picture on the right, or chairs or music stands and, and so on. So uh, how is the board considering or how has the board been discussing uh, potentially addressing these kinds of issues associated with the auditoriums? The first is um, the consideration to renovate the high school space. There's a problem that we run into when we look at a real significant renovation of the high school auditorium, and that is that although the seating capacity is um, less than we would like, it's not really cost effective or possible to expand the site in any meaningful way. Uh, and that's according to two of our architects, uh, from two architects from our firm of record. And that's because the building is locked in uh, to to the rest of the facility. So it's uh, very difficult to alter the roof line or somehow pry it away or knock it down from um, its current location and position. So what we would uh, propose or what, we, what, what the board has been discussing is staying within the footprint of the high school auditorium, uh, but basically replacing a lot of those original fixtures. So replace the original carpet, replace the original seating. If the original seating is replaced, uh, we have to bring it up to code from an ADA standpoint. Uh, if you've been in the high school auditorium, there's only, there isn't any center aisle, if you will. We have to put in a center aisle so we would lose some seating. Um, and we would replace the wall covering and some of the other incidentals that right now uh, are original to the facility. And the cost we project, and that's really our architect's projection, uh, would be under a million dollars to do that. Um, of course, that doesn't leave us with um, 
to, to use a term that Ms. Weber uh, uh, used before, a world-class kind of auditorium. We, we'd like to have a modern uh, place where we can build sets and we can store uh, items for big productions and so forth. So the consideration has been, or the discussion has been, to build a new auditorium here at the middle school. At the middle school, though, we have the same problem that we have at the high school with respect to expanding the footprint or the site of the current auditorium. So this is uh, an aerial shot of where we are right now. And you can see that the middle school auditorium also is surrounded by classroom and other space. Uh, and so it, 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 can't, be, it can't be readily um, expanded in any kind of material way. So the discussion has been then to not use this current auditorium that we're in right now any longer as an auditorium, and instead build a new auditorium in what is the circle. Because the circle is spacious. Uh, in terms of a square footage cost, our architect believes it would be more, um, it, it would cost less money to start anew on a blank slate than it would be to try to expand somehow one of the facilities that's already locked into the rest of the school. So doing that makes a few things possible. Uh, the first thing it does is it would enable the entire CMS student body to fit into the auditorium. Right now it can. Uh, so we would be able to have whole school assemblies, which we can't do now. Uh, it would give us more seating for our big productions, like the high school musical, just as in, for instance, or an awards program at the high school, which right now we can't really run the way we used to be able to run. Um, we would not contemplate, by the way, busing students during the day from the Southern Boulevard, let's just say, for a 10 a.m. concert. That's not, that wouldn't be what we would envision, although it might be more likely that the Southern Boulevard community might want to utilize a new site or a new space um, for evening production. But it's not something that we would contemplate uh, busing kids, you know, on a regular basis during the school day. There also, importantly, would be a way for us to then pick up space for construction, uh, for building, and also for storage. Uh, we think that if we had a site that um, was competitive with the sites that, that exist currently in other, in other communities, we would be more attractive to outside groups and possibly be able to rent out this uh, facility. And then finally, um, having the kind of space that we have available in the circle would enable us to include some other uses, uh, such as um, a foyer that's large enough where we could exhibit uh, artwork, fine artwork, at, at times, if not regularly, and also possibly a small area for outdoor kinds of performances. Even if it was the community band that was playing out there and not one of our own ensembles, um, we think that that could be uh, useful and exciting. The cost of building a new auditorium uh, is about $12.5 million, according to the architect. Uh, so that's a big price tag uh, in comparison to the other projects that, I'll, that I'm talking about. Uh, also, just for um, conceptualization sake, uh, we would plan to connect the auditorium via a bridge uh, from behind the balcony up there. So on the second story, there'd be a connection uh, from, the, from this building to the new uh, building. Uh, that would maintain the driveway area into the school and the traffic flow. And then we would add some parking uh, to try to uh, you know, help situate uh, the site. So as an aerial, just a rough uh, preliminary sketch from the architect. The, we're currently sitting in the blue uh, up there, that's the current auditorium. The brown is the circle. Uh, you can see that the driveway would stay intact. We'd add parking uh, below the, the circle, if you will, if you're looking at this stage. Uh, and we would be able to kind of maybe play a little bit with the, um, with the space alongside the auditorium for one of those outdoor, um, outdoor venues. Then, of course, we'd be able to use this big space that we're in now for other purposes. There are three that we've identified as possibilities. The first would be instructional space. We have only one computer lab in this building. Uh, it's behind this stage, actually. Um, so we would look to create a couple of more computer labs, potentially, and also a design and engineering uh, studio. As you know, through the generosity of the community, we increased our STEM offerings, uh, K-5, last year, K-5 in particular, but also in this building. We expect those programs to grow, and we have um, our design and engineering uh, class that all students take is, is in a regular classroom uh, upstairs on the second floor. So we could use more uh, instructional space to support these kinds of programs. In addition to that, 
we would try to capture office space. Uh, when I came to the district, the board office was on the third or fourth floor, just the third floor maybe of the borough municipal building. Uh, we moved about eight years ago. We rent out space from the township. The township is a wonderful host. They're, they're great. Um, but we would save a little bit of money if we could relocate the board offices. And I know offices are somewhat controversial, but there are other needs that we have as well. Uh, and I'll just give you two examples very quickly in this building. Um, we have a student assistance counselor who works with kids in crisis uh, who are having emotional uh, issues. Uh, her office is a converted book closet. Took the books out, ripped out the shelving. That's where she counsels kids uh, right down the hall. We have supervisors who work with teachers in this building. We have no dedicated office space for them. So we took an ante room in front of the men's bathroom upstairs, put down some carpet, ran a phone line, and they work there. And there are male faculty members who literally walk through the office and use the bathroom uh, in the back of the office. So we have use for, we have need of legitimate need for space, more professional space uh, in the district. And then finally, and this has been something that has sprouted conversation about the senior center. Uh, so let me just try to be clear. The discussions uh, on the part of the board have been to try to allocate or, or save some portion of space in this potential facility um, that would be not exclusive to the district, but that would be accessible to outside groups, whether it was the community school um, you know, that uh, puts on programs here, or the community center, or the recreation department, but some kind of space that would be a little bit more open and available to um, a diverse uh, segment of the community. And the cost of, retro, of, uh, of converting this whole uh, auditorium into those three uses would be about $3.4 million, according to the architect. The next two I've grouped together, um, they are improvements to athletic facilities that we have um, not invested in uh, so much to this point, at least in terms of the improvements that we're, we're talking about. At Cougar Field, uh, I'm sure if you've been there, you have seen the condition of the bleachers. Um, it's something that the Board of Education has received numerous complaints about uh, over the past couple of years. Uh, the sound system is old, uh, and even this current season, the football season, the first game of home game we had of the year, there was a moment of silence for uh, two players who had tragically passed away on the uh, opposing side. No one can even hear the, the moment of silence because the, the system is, uh, is, doesn't work as well as it should. Uh, the, parking, the parking is not it, it's a little bit chaotic there. It could be improved. Um, the fencing, the pavement, uh, the, the site was acquired in the 1970s. I don't know how much of that is original, uh, but it's aging. And then finally, this last bullet, I'll just mention that our fastest growing athletic uh, activities in the district are running. Uh, we have our cross country population is booming, winter track, spring track. Uh, for those of you with younger kids, you probably know that for the first year there was a youth running program here in Shadow. There were 160 kids that signed up in year one. Um, so we'd like to create some kind of uh, like cinder um, or crushed stone path around the site, around the perimeter of the site, uh, because our kids currently don't have any place to run that resembles the types of surfaces they run on uh, when they go to a meet. Uh, at the high school field, um, behind the field, that's a, from my understanding, uh, at one time there was a track back there. Uh, there may have even been a football field, if I'm not mistaken, but those were, were removed a long time ago. Maybe at the time of merger, I'm not sure, at the time we acquired uh, Cooper Field. In any event, uh, the site has not been properly graded according to our architect or, or the engineer from the architectural firm. Uh, we would need to regrade the site to improve drainage uh, and other issues that we have back there. Um, and what the board has discussed doing uh, has been to create two baseball fields or possibly make one of them um, a versatile field where you could put softball uh, at times on an as-needed basis uh, and then create some kind of multi-purpose field that almost spans both outfields where you could in fact have field hockey or freshman field hockey team practices at that site now uh, or lacrosse or soccer uh, or some other uh, sport and um, the board of education has discussed Perfing that field to try to increase the uh, the amount of field time that those various uh, athletic groups could uh, could be on the field. In the spring, in particular, we have trouble getting on that field because the drainage isn't good and the snow melts uh, very slowly. Uh, the sixth project that has been discussed, as Ms. Weber pointed out, was expanding our elementary schools. 
Right now, we um, are, you know, to say space is at premium is an understatement. Washington Avenue is absolutely um, booked. Uh, it, it's beyond booked. Southern Boulevard School is very tight. Um, we actually had to move the faculty room to the basement this past summer, and we created a music room in the basement in what used to be a storage room uh, because we don't have space in the rest of the facility. And um, so we would consider uh, two classroom expansion at SBS, two classrooms at Bosch, and then four at Milton Avenue School. And as Ms. Weber mentioned, um, that would do two things. First of all, it would help us uh, meet the needs of our kids a little bit better today. And especially at Washington Avenue School, I'd probably say um, it would, it would be, the, the space would be utilized immediately. Um, it also would enable the Board of Education and, to consider adding other programs to the district, whether it be specific special education programs, uh, which we have increased in recent years, or a program like full-day kindergarten. And I have the same note here. Um, we're double and triple confirming this with uh, outside sources, but as of today, from what our council has told us, uh, if the board were to go forward with a second question, like it did last year for STEM, or the year before for school counseling, uh, the board then is required to implement that program the ensuing school year. Uh, so our understanding at present from board council is that um, we have to position a second question when we know the facilities are ready to then receive the second question, the, the topic of the second question. So uh, I know these numbers have been posted on our website, but, I'll, but uh, I'll, I'll just go through them again or post them here again. So um, these are preliminary estimates. They're from our bond council. Um, obviously, they would be subject to change if these projects, uh, well, if they don't go forward, then we don't need to worry about them. But if the projects change in some way, like as an example, if the Milton Avenue addition was cut in half to two classrooms, that would obviously reduce the cost. If, uh, Someone brought up potentially putting a bathroom at Cougar Field, which we really don't have a public facility there. That would increase the cost. So these numbers may move. Uh, just want to stress that they're not set in stone. This is the, the projections based on the current discussions. And you can see what the average um, annual tax impact would be per project in each of the municipalities as you move on down the list. Um, and you can you know, peruse these numbers, of course, uh, a little bit more. Um, your leisure. I'll just mention funding options uh, because one of the things I said earlier was some of these projects, and I would say the high school auditorium in particular, they need to be addressed regardless of whether there's a referendum you know, now. Um, so there are different ways that a board of education can raise money to address these kinds of issues uh, or other issues. One is a bond referendum, which is what we're talking about. Another is a separate budget question, which we touched on. Third is through just the annual operating budget, which is what you vote on in April. And then fourth is through private donations. The bond referendum is attractive um, at the current time because interest rates are so low, the credit rating of the district is solid. Uh, the term of the bond, this is something that the, the Board of Education discussed, but a bond, unlike uh, a permanent increase in the tax levy, ultimately falls off. Uh, so it's not quite the same as a permanent increase in the tax levy. It's a loan, you know, or a mortgage for a set period of time. Um, the board and the district recently refunded current debt at lower rate, so those numbers reflect uh, that the that the, the current um, you know uh, tax rate is going to decrease a little bit. And um, one of those referendum re referendum that I had up on the screen earlier is coming off uh, toward the end of this uh, year, school year. Uh, bond referenda have all also become somewhat popular or at least more common in New Jersey since the financial crisis hit. So I just put up here the last three dates of proposals in New Jersey. There are only five, I think, dates over the course of the year uh, on which a school district can move forward with a, a bond referendum proposal. Uh, so back in March, right before our uh, budget vote, 13 districts went forward. 11 of them were approved by the communities there, and it was about 116 million total. Uh, in September, uh, just you know, two months ago, 21 districts went forward, 17 passed, and uh, there were $300 million approved in total projects. And then just on November 4th, some districts um, uh, put forth a question on election day. Five, five went forward, five were passed. 
uh, and that total is about 45 million. So it's just to say that the low interest environment uh, is bringing boards of education to move forward with projects that they've been delayed. Uh, a separate budget question, as I say, uh, tends to be a permanent increase in the tax levy. Uh, that impact is usually greater because you're not financing whatever the project is. So you know, if you put a second question forward for a $5 million project, it's not financed, it would, it would come out in the tax levy um, immediately that ensuing year. Uh, operating budget is a, one of the reasons we're in the position we're in is because the state of New Jersey forbids us from carrying cash. We can't carry any surplus greater than 2% year to year, uh, and we have a 2% cap on the tax levy increase. In a community like this, where 93% or so of our budget is financed through um, or funded through uh, the local tax levy, there isn't a lot of room to include big projects uh, in our annual operating budget, and it's difficult uh, to save up for them. So we can do that to an extent, and that's what we've done uh, with our capital reserve uh, and how we funded the, the most recent high school additions in a two-step phase in over about five years. And then finally, I just wanted to mention private donations because there are a number of people in this room who have approached me or the board directly about raising money to support the projects that I just spoke about. Uh, that's something that we are certainly going to um, take advantage of. Uh, and um, naturally, the groups uh, would be are incredibly grateful to the groups that have expressed a willingness to try to offset some of these costs or enhance these projects through private uh, funding. So, I know that was a little quick, um, but I want to turn it over to the board and give uh, them an opportunity to facilitate the, uh, the public comment. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh, this one's working out. Again, thank you. I, I guess better every time I see it, I'm thinking we're going to have one of the performing arts students put some soundtrack behind that. A little music, a little intro. Before we move on to the public commentary section, I just wanted to remind everybody, for those that you that happen to maybe come in a little bit late, um, just to, again, general guidelines. We're going to try and skip the, make sure the comments stay relevant and focused on the referendum and some of the projects being discussed. Um, please try and keep your comments to no more than three minutes. And we want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to speak, so please only come up to the microphone once. And, and also, more, most importantly, please be very respectful and courteous of each other and to the board members and the administration. We're all just trying to do our best. We're trying to get to the best possible product, so just keep in mind that we're all here for the same purpose, to do the right thing and improve, and improve our district and improve our town. So I think the plan is um, this podium here, is where folks will line up maybe up the aisle and come to the podium if you have some comments you would like to share. If there's no comments anybody likes to share, we can wrap up sooner. <laughs> That's it? That's it. Uh, please sign in, introduce yourself, and if you wouldn't mind just getting it through the borough of the township. We're going to keep the comments open for about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. So again, if, it, if the commentary becomes repetitive and you still need to speak up, please just say, I'm in favor, I'm against, I'm opposed, you're out of your minds. You need to come up with a better mousetrap. So please, if you would, just start lining up. And we, as to, to steal Mr. Connor's phrase, we are here tonight to be sponges. We're going to listen to everything you have to say up until about 9.15 or 30. <laughs> My name is Jill Corwin. I reside at 44 Medical Road in the Bronx. Tonight, I am here to speak to you as a parent who is passionate about our education and school district of Chatham. As a former co-producer of the Washington Avenue School Players, and as a current co-producer for the Chatham High School Theater Department. Most importantly, tonight, I am here as a founding member of a new parent group called Encore, created by Jessica Green, Jen Clark, and myself. Encore's mission is to raise funds to supplement the creation of a state-of-the-art performing arts center to benefit our school district and the entire community of Chatham. We are committed to raising the funds necessary to supplement this amazing project via special fundraising events, reaching out to potential corporate donors, and more traditional fundraising avenues such as equipment donation or seat and brick sales. We at Encore share your vision. We see what a new performing arts center means to the children of our district and our Chatham community. It goes beyond a mere building. 
It gives our students of the arts a proper home in Chatham where they can perform for a larger audience and build sets in a safe environment. We understand what it means to our community. Not only does it offer a place for our children to perform and thrive, but this new venue offers the community an opportunity to host outside speakers and entertainers which could potentially stimulate Chatham's economy. And let's not forget the ability to draw outside performing arts companies and the like to rent our new facility for a fee. We applaud you for not only proposing a new space, but creatively reinventing old spaces for educating and enriching our children. We at Encore appreciate the time you have taken out of your personal lives, not only to address the needs of the arts in our district, but to always put our children first. This is the moment. This all-encompassing referendum that reaches every child keeps our district competitive with those around it. We recommend the Board of Education, excuse me, we commend the Board of Education for wanting to keep our district and community of Chatham on top. We simply want to say thank you. And if you didn't get a sign, please feel free to stand up. Thank you for allowing us the opportunity to weigh in tonight. Uh, Could you introduce yourself tonight? My name is Sal Arnott. My wife, Carolyn, and I are co-presidents of the CMTB, the Chatham Music and Theater Boosters. We reside on Hall Road in Chatham Township. Well over a half century ago, as Dr. Lasusa pointed out, Chatham citizens met and discussed the educational needs of their kids and decided to spend big bucks by building entire new schools. It was a tough and anguishing topic back then, and here we are facing similarly difficult issues again over 60 years later. We've been in Chatham for over 20 years. We're still raising our kids here. Two are in college, one is in high school. The athletic and performing arts programs in Chatham were incredible for my children, and I credit these programs for developing my kids into confident young men and women. Soon, my wife and I will be empty nesters, so the stuff we're talking about tonight will not affect my kids directly, although it will affect our wallets as taxpayers. Young families from far away know how great our schools are, which is why they move here to raise their kids. They keep our property values high even during tough times. God bless them. Regarding the proposed capital improvements, our schools are old, our fields are old, our bleachers are old, our 60-year-old auditoriums have leaky roofs, inadequate seating, and even asbestos. Tons of this stuff needs investment, and now we have a choice. We can deal, deal with all of these issues on the cheap, where our taxes are still going to go up, we'll still be short auditorium space, we'll still be short space for classrooms and programs like STEM, or we can think bigger, like the Chath Chatham residents did in the 1950s and 40s when they decided to build these entire schools. It's my belief that we need to think of our school systems as a garden, and gardens need attention. They need cultivating, they need investment, and if you don't con constantly tend to them and keep them maintained, they go downhill and downhill fast. Let's talk about thinking big. The proposed items just mentioned, include a new, including a new middle school auditorium, will give the kids inspiring performing art space that demonstrates our commitment to them. It'll create space for STEM and other classes at the middle school. It'll give us fields on par with, not exceeding, our neighboring towns. It will allow for expansion of the overcrowded elementary schools. It will save an operating cost by moving the Board of Ed to the middle school. It will generate income because the auditorium can be rented out to other commercial productions when not in use by the kids. It will bring business downtown. It will bring the community together. And it will do all of this for the price to each household of under 200 bucks a year, which works out to about $4 a week, the price of a cup of Starbucks coffee. Interest rates today are low, the money's cheap, and it, won't, and it won't always be. If we invest in the kids today, we best prepare them to enter the best universities and careers, and to prepare them to positively impact the world in our town. Sal, if you could wrap it up. Yeah. Thank you. We have a generational opportunity in front of us to not remove options for them, but instead build a foundation to serve them for decades, just as Ch Chatham residents did 60 years ago for our kids today. For Carolyn and I, the choice is clear. It's a hard world, 
we know that this is the best hit gift we could ever give our future children in this town and i hope everyone will be open minded and i want to say thank you to dr this is and the board for thinking long term My name is Joanne Perrin. I live on Hillside Avenue in the borough. I probably won't get a lot of applause, but I have a lot of questions. The first being, I understand we've saved $3 million in debt servicing by, by refinancing our, our debt. Does that $3 million savings show up in your operating budget? No. Oh, no. Answer no. Where does it show up? Shows up in the debt service budget, out of which the borough and the township fund the district on an annual basis. Okay, so so if the district if the district gets funded today, by the savings in a little in some way, the township and borough save the district does not. Huh? If the district closed the doors today, the debt service that is existing would still need to be paid. Got it. Got it. Now the next question I have is. Uh, the superintendent, I'm sorry, I forgot your name, spoke about the ongoing construction at Washington Three Grammar Schools. Um, is that inclusive of the additional classrooms? I mean, was that already in the bond of the 25 million in 1995? Uh, I'll just repeat that question. I'm a little well, yes. There's an ongoing project at each of the grammar schools to expand them, correct? No, there's no ongoing project. Oh, okay. That's a consideration. It's yeah. a consideration. It's not already started. And I don't want to put any pressure on you, Joanne, but the time's run out. Uh-oh. All right, I just wanted to know that. And also, can the board put the figures together for me for all of those items that absolutely must be done, like the high school situation, and, um, those, uh, let's see. Oh, the other question is, what are the capital reserves now? About 1.2 million. And is any of that gonna be used in this project? We, we haven't you? finalized that yet. You yeah. could say, you know, most likely not. But they're not, they're not reflected over. certainly in these numbers. But there. you can't carry over more than 2%, right? No, with capital reserve, you can carry over more than 2%. You can't, there's a different surplus fund where you can't carry over. Oh, more okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Good evening. My name is Dan Moskowitz. I live at 75 Chatham Street in the borough. I'm the parent of a Chatham High School student and high school baseball player. I'm here to represent both current and future high school baseball parents. Chatham currently holds the title of the number one public school in New Jersey. A lot of effort, forward thinking, and money has been invested in the school system's academic curriculum in order to make this happen. It is my hope that the Board of Ed will place the same level of focus and attention on some of its growing facilities needs. If you've attended plays, music performances, STEM events, sporting events over the past few years, you probably notice that these facilities are long overdue for an upgrade, and not what you would expect from Chatham. In the end, we would like all of our facilities to more closely resemble, resemble our number one school rate. The proposed referendum put, put out tonight addresses those exact needs. These projects call for a new performing arts center, new classrooms, new computer labs, design and engineering labs, updated auditoriums, upgrades to the Cougar Field Complex, and upgrade to the uh, fields behind the high school. These upgrades would create state-of-the-art facilities for drama groups, a burgeoning STEM program, robotics, marching band, orchestras, soccer, field hockey, football, lacrosse, phys ed, and of course, baseball. The current athletic fields and marching band complex behind the high school is already in need of a very expensive upgrade. These fields were damaged in a school expansion more than 10 years ago, and since then, several band-aids have been applied. But the major issues of grading, drainage, etc., were not properly addressed. After careful thought and much discussion with a group of concerned baseball parents, along with input from the high school baseball coach, the group was unanimous in our support of a turf baseball field. The primary reasons we support the turf initiative are the following. 
the weather. The weather in New Jersey is not conducive to a high school baseball season. It takes place primarily in March and April and a little bit into May. In fact, you're seeing more and more high school and college programs, particularly in the Northeast, put in more and more artificial turf. Yeah. Um, second reason is uh, we lack the manpower and expertise to properly maintain a grass and dirt field used by so many sports, baseball, field hockey, marching band, phys, phys ed classes. The turfing of this complex would allow the school district to greatly increase the utilization of this site for, the, for its students. We have asked a few concerned high school baseball parents, along with the youth, youth baseball program board members, to attend tonight's meeting and show their support. At this time, I'd like to ask. <laughs> at this time, I'd like to ask these baseball-minded parents that support the baseball project behind the high school to please stand and raise your hands. Thank you. We both wanted to come tonight to express how much we would love to see a performing arts center here in Chatham. I was fortunate to be a part of Walk Players at Washington Avenue School. I'm currently a fifth grader at Lafayette. Being a part of Walk Players was fantastic. Being given the opportunity to perform on stage has given me such confidence in the ability to speak in front of people. I play a lot of sports in town, which I love, but I equally love performing and hope that we have a new facility in town to do so. I also play sports in town, and I was also part of WASP Players, um, and I realized while I was doing the play that there was limited space in the gym, and that since there was, we, each performer could only have two tickets for their family, and some of our family members couldn't come, and I think, yeah, and we think that with the new Performing Arts Center, People can discover new talents that they didn't know that they had. Hi, my name is Zoe Horowitz. I live on 44 Meadowbrook Road in the borough. And I am a seventh grade student here at CMS, and I have been part of many musicals here in the district. Let me start off by telling you who I am. My name is Zoe Horowitz. I am a theater fan. I work hard for what I do. On behalf of all of my friends, I'd like to say that we hope to be on stage until we graduate. In fact, I'm sure we'd all like to be on stage for the rest of our lives. It is our dream to become the people you idolize. The Performing Arts Center will help us in our journey to become the full-fledged versions of the people we really are. Thank you for making the start to support our dreams and considering the referendum. Thank you. I actually was because how do you follow adorable kids? And they all did it within the three minutes. <laughs> so actually, I have questions, and I'm going to ask the questions, and then you can answer them. Because I don't want to do it. Oh, Mark Visco, uh, Lemon Duchamp Place in the borough. Uh, just a clarifying question, because you keep saying second question, and maybe it's just me and I don't get that, but does that mean you can add it to the first question and it's considered one question? The first question is really the overall budget, because we vote on our budget every April, so any question after that is the okay. second or third. All right. so the first question is always considered the budget. Okay. Uh, Not to be mistaken with a referendum, which is totally different. Okay. Right. So, uh, regarding the Performing Arts Center, so if this is offered to outside groups, so how is that going to work on school property? The other thing is, a, a, oh, I just lost my question. <laughs> so if you do offer it to outside people, how is that going to impact like insurance, parking, traffic, what's been done to kind of address that? The other thing is, um, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have typed my notes on this. Uh, and then the other thing is, um, oh, darn. The girls threw you off in there. They did, they did. No, here it is, okay, got it back. Um, have, you, have you talked to other towns, because they're talking about renting it out in revenue, have you spoken to other towns that have done that, and what's been the result in getting the rent? Uh, is it something that is done? 
how much revenue has been generated and what will be done with that revenue once you get it. And what will happen, I know you're gonna be doing the high school auditorium over as well, where you're gonna repurpose this. What will happen with the high school auditorium? Will it still be used or will everything be done in this performing arts center? And also, if it does get rented, is there gonna be oversight and administration and other things that are gonna be run to run that and who will be responsible and what will happen with that? Okay, thank you. You know what, we're gonna record all the questions that we can take tonight and create like our frequently asked questions and, and maybe a uh, quick reference guide. But so we wanna make sure that everybody has an opportunity to, uh, to speak. So more to come. And some of those things, you know, we, we aren't shaped out yet. We may not move forward with the referendum at all, so, you know. Okay. Thank you, I appreciate that. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, hi, my name is Derek Walsh. I am a current senior at Chatham High School, and I've been involved with the uh, theater productions since about sixth grade. Um, during my course of doing theater and everything, never have I seen more uh, dedicated and um, willing people than theater people. Um, I think, yeah, we definitely are the best people, as i said before. <laughs> um, but, what I feel is that, um, was it? Sorry, it's just kind of helping me breathe. Um, I think we definitely really do need to, um, we definitely do deserve a uh, new referendum. And, um, no, sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you'll ask like most theater people, and that's like one of the only things they do, me um, especially, and it would really mean a lot to us for uh, you to even consider um, us in mind when making a new auditorium um, with conditions that we're in right now. Um, it would definitely mean a lot more to us than just making a, like a new auditorium. And um, yeah, they're really, theater people are really passionate people, and um, it, Definitely means a lot to us that you're considering to um, was it expands the amount of people that are willing to see the show by making a bigger auditorium. Uh, we really love showing people what we do, and uh, we really want to make sure that everyone has a chance to see the shows and everything. So um, considering even making a new auditorium means a lot to us, and we hope that you fall through. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dan. Is there a good luck this weekend in the play? Good luck in the play this weekend? Oh, thank you. Um, my name is Alex Clark and um, I'm in the borough of Dixon, Okay. Um, hi, my name is Alex Clark. I play in fourth grade five football and I've been to high school football games. I think that the bleachers are un the bleachers at um, Chatham at Cougar Field are unsafe because someone can just fall through them. I think that you should put like a little floor to walk up to the bleachers. It will be easier and more safe. I also performed in Lost Players and um, and Broadway Bootcamp shows. They both have been a great experience for me on stage. It is fun to act and have some fun with my friends. I love to sing and dance. I have been acting since I was in kindergarten. Acting makes me feel alive. Thank you, Alex. Hi, my name is Roman Green and I live at 204 Watchung Avenue. I was going to wrap my speech, but my mom told me to just speak it. <laughs> I'm in the seventh grade and a cast member of The Little Mermaid. I started out at Washington Avenue School of Sting One in Susicle. My love for theater cannot be described in words. I believe that the school district of the Chathams will greatly benefit from this new theater. The theaters at the middle school and high school are very old and not in good condition. In concerts, people often have to stand in the aisles. The new theater will offer about 400 more seats. This way more people will be able to sit and get a good view. Thank you.
My name is Stuart Carr. I'm with uh, Three Crestwood Drive in Chatham. I'm a 23-year resident of uh, Chatham. Uh, two kids not in the Chatham school system that have gone through the Chatham Rec program. I know absolutely nothing about fine arts, have no appreciation for it whatsoever. But this action, I'm totally sold on this idea. I also have a green space issue, so I was aggravated a little bit about the green space out front. You've made the sale there. I think it's a terrific idea. It's probably the highest and best use of the facility here to have this performing arts center. Again, with kids who are just athletic and know that arts, I totally support this whole arts idea. It makes all the sense in the world. Whatever you have to do, fine. Uh, number two item with respect to the 26 odd million, I've got no quibbles with the absolute dollar amount. The only issue I have is with the baseball frames over here. I would argue strenuously for a uh, grass field that's done the right way in town as opposed to a turf field. Rationale really twofold. One, there is a park-like setting behind the high school. And I think for the neighbors and for somebody who's not too far from the high school, that grass surface has a lot of aesthetic appeal. So I think if we can keep that, that would be a very good item. I think there's a way to drain things. I think there's a way to work the field because again, it did get busted up because of the construction years ago. So if there's a way to work that, maybe the baseball folks could be considered or to be considered of a uh, grass idea. And then perhaps with the March or the April scenario, perhaps double use the uh, lung field or something else for infield practice and that type of thing. Perhaps you can get away with it, perhaps not. But I would like you to consider the idea of grass in the back if at all possible. Uh, number three item is uh, with respect to the different additions in the different schools, let's try again to go up instead of out. We had, had this discussion years ago with you guys is if we can have the bigger footprints and the bigger uh, footings and go up for second and third story as opposed to keep doing the ranch, go out. We maintain green space. I think that's important for the kids. The more green space, the better. I think we made some mistakes with uh, Southern Boulevard School with the added parking. We probably could have done something better with the green space around there. Again, I'd encourage you to do that. So again, I'm sold on the whole thing. The issue with the four and a half million on the uh, uh, on the turf again, take that, redirect it into more STEM, build another STEM field, or not field, but another floor, science wing, whatever you need to do with it, but try and again use that type of money, I think, for something other than turf. And if you need to spend four and a half on that, get more maintenance people so you can have a better grass field. But that's my only, again, put with the baseball folks. I'm talking again a college baseball player in high school, went through 10 years of Chatham, or uh, not uh, seven or eight years of the rec program in Chatham. So I'm a baseball person, but nevertheless want to. Uh, have folks consider that. And finally, I assume we did speak to this budget issue. I assume the board is still for the indefinite future uh, in tune with the April budget idea and not moving to November. Is there any talk about this idea moving to November and getting away from the Certainly not tonight. Time? That's well, but at some point, I just want to make sure it's an indefinite future because it's not very, tonight, Mr. Park. very important to have that uh, going forward. Thank Thanks you. very much. And again, I support this whole budget. Thank you. I'll be brief. Uh, Julia Callahan, if the board knows, I represent a large group that's ready to mobilize in support of the referendum. Speaking as a leader of that group, we are particularly interested in the expansion of the elementary schools, which are needed due to the issues of overcrowding, as you mentioned, and could also be, be a precursor to full-day kindergarten. I just wanted to ask those that are here in support of that particular expansion to please stand or raise your hand. Hi, my name is Mike Feeman. I'm also here uh, as a member of Julia's group. Would like to support what she just said in terms of the classroom expansions in the uh, elementary schools for future program years. I'd also like to pose a question about how much thought and planning that we really put into maintaining all this once we build it. Um, I, I've heard a lot around the capital investment, but frankly, not enough around how we're going to operate and maintain this, which I absolutely want us to make the capital investment because it's important, but I don't want us to lose sight of the fact that this has to be maintained and developed properly as we go forward. And I don't think I've heard that detail yet. Uh, and I'd be interested in hearing much more around that to ensure the investment for the long term. Thank you. Hi. Pat Ackert, I live in Chatham Borough. Uh, I have a three-year-old son, so we, my family feels very invested in all levels of Chatham School to come for him. We expect to be living, schooling, voting, and paying taxes in Chatham for many years to come. Um, 
I actually support all these things in theory, but I, I played sports in high school, I support the arts, I work for an arts and cultural nonprofit. These are all great ideas, but it's also reality, and we have to decide where our priorities are and what we're going to fund. Um, and that's where I, I really wish that, uh, unfortunately, it's great to have students come and speak in support of their passions, whether it's arts or sports. I don't think it's going to be easy to find students to come up and start lining up to talk about how much they want more classrooms. So I'm going to try to speak on behalf of, of those absent students. Um, so I very much support the elementary school uh, expansion, and I have five reasons why. First, it would alleviate overcrowding. Second, it would pave the way for full-day kindergarten, as well as other programs. Uh, as were alluded to by the superintendent earlier. Third, unlike the other things on the possible referendum, it would benefit all children and not just ones who participate in certain parts of school life. Third, fourth, this one is the least cost to the taxpayers. I was very clear on the chart up there. And fifth, it is the only one that speaks to classroom space as the first piece of the issue. I see the superintendent nodding there. Thank you. Um, you spoke about overcrowding at all the schools and looked at the huge expansion of student enrollment at all the schools. And so I think it's a shame that we only actually have one thing on the agenda that would expand classroom space as, as its main mission. So I'm very much in support of expanding classroom space. I wish there was more about that, um, but I'm very much in support of expanding it where you have no debt at the elementary school level. I would also like to briefly speak to the arts related proposals. Um, I am a very passionate supporter of the arts. And so it somewhat pains me to not be able to support as a taxpayer this very expensive proposal for a brand new performing arts center. Um, this region and this area are steeped in the arts. We are less than an hour from Broadway. We are 20 minutes from NJ Pack. We are 15 minutes from the Paper Mill Playhouse. We have had a tremendous number of outstanding performers come from New Jersey, whether it's Springsteen, Bon Jovi, Lauren Hill, Queen Latifah, Anne Hathaway, Zach Graff, Frank Valley. The list just goes on and on and on. You do not need a so-called world-class performing arts center for middle and high school students to chart, to indulge a passion in art and to turn out amazing performers. So I would, just like, and I would just like to encourage the school board to put these issues to the voters. There's been a tremendous amount of support, as you have seen over the last year, for investment in the elementary schools, and hopefully further down the road, uh, road full-day kindergarten. So please get that issue on the ballot. Like I said, I support all of these things in theory, but where it comes to tax dollars, I really think the greatest investment would be uh, in the classroom space. Thank you very much. I'm Dave Wigan, I'm an impressed with driving the township. Uh, following on last month's couple of days, I moved to this town because of the schools. I've got two kids in the schools now, very excited about what's going on with the schools themselves. However, there are a couple of things you need to think about, or I have a request you think about, as you look at these items. Following on the last speaker's comments, with respect to outside revenue, the taxpayers of the town should know what it, zero revenue looks like on the proposed performing arts center. I love the performing arts center. I'm a guy who played all the way through college, uh, going through the arts, but you need to be realistic, assuming it will be zero. Because there are enough venues around us that we should not assume that there will be outside revenue. I don't know what the details are, but you should look at that. Secondly, following on the observations about school rooms, love the fact that I mean, we've got burgeoning classes, that's great. What's the downstream impact of adding more classrooms at each of the three elementary schools? Do we have an upgrade uh, at Lafayette coming down the road? The taxpayer should know that up front of is logically, if there are if there are uh, increases at the elementary schools, presumably it builds to downstream at Lafayette. Same here at the middle school, and obviously we've got the ex uh, expansion going on at the high school right now. Presumably it all rolls together. Just one of total cost. Just one of the total cost. We pay lots of taxes here. If you're bonded, the thing the taxpayers need to know is if the bond referendum doesn't meet its needs, it comes out of higher taxes for people down the road. Again, love the town, love the taxes. Just got to be realistic in what we expect for people in that regard. Um, 
Last item is just, you know, with respect to Fugger Field and the expansions therein. It's a pretty good field. It's in pretty good shape. Yes, there are a couple of towns immediately adjacent to us that may be better. There are a lot of towns that actually look up to us that I've been reached out to by people on the school boards and other towns asking us how we got to where we are now. Our kids have pretty good facilities in that regard today. They should always expand, but we need to just be prudent in terms of how we actually approach that. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jessica Green. I reside at 204 Watchung in the borough, and I'm here as a founding member of Encore. The proposed Performing Arts Center is not a want, it's a need. There is a need right now to provide students with a larger structure that reflects the caliber of talent that exists here today. Accomplished students deserve a safe, up-to-date facility with room for the performers on stage and members of the audience. Chatham's proximity to New York City helps Chatham kids maintain a high level of performing excellence. As a former casting director on Broadway and at Paper Mill, I can professionally attest that talented students reside here. Many are performing and auditioning professionally in New York City in music, film, TV, and stage, who then return to our public schools to perform. Two Chatham Middle School students have played piano at Carnegie Hall, yet they also play in the school band. We have two Chatham High School students who have performed in Broadway shows, and they receive special permission from the Actors' Equity Association, the union, to perform in the high school musical every year. There is a thirst for the performing arts in this town. Lack of sufficient performing space has ushered in the era of the wait list. Hundreds of children audition for the middle and high school musicals and our spaces cannot accommodate all of them being cast in the shows. Not to mention non-performing kids involved in backstage, crew, sound, and light. My Theater Camp for Kids sells out by April with a wait list every summer. The Washington Avenue Players had, at one point, 140 children in their musicals and were sold out in 10 minutes with a wait list of children who had to be turned away. There was simply no room to safely squeeze one more child on that stage. A huge parent volunteer community made those shows happen and was a highlight of attending Washington Avenue School. Two years ago, the well-loved head show at Lafayette switch to become an after-school enrichment because there's simply no room to accommodate the growing classes. There's also been wait lists to get into the head show ever since. The need is crucial for the older student performers at both the high school and middle school that contend with cramped space, crowded dressing rooms where you literally cannot stand up straight in that dressing room. Performing in auditoriums that are 40 and 60 years old. Both competitive and inner city schools in our area have up-to-date, computerized, spacious theaters with no wait lists. 20 seconds, please. Thank you for the volunteers on the Board of Ed for recognizing the need that exists for a new performing arts center and the unifying spirit that the arts provides. I'm Kathy Jenkinson. I live in Green Village. My daughter currently goes to Washington Avenue School. Um, we were, actually we bought our home 15 years ago. We were slighted to go to the Southern Boulevard School, but because of overcrowding there, we were then sent to Washington, which we're very thrilled with. It doesn't matter what school you go to in Chatham. And I do ag agree that we do need necessary improvements to the area. But my big question right now deals with what's going on outside of Chatham but it will be going through Chatham if it gets approved. It's what are you planning or how are you planning to protect the investments that you're asking for the money to spend if the Pilgrim Pipeline goes right through Chatham Township, Chatham Borough. I'm not sure if anyone is aware of it, but there is still this possibility and we all must fight against this. But I'd like to also know what the Board of Education's opinion is, uh, are they with us or against it, against the Pilgrim Pipeline? Yeah, we're not going to discuss that tonight. Well, it, but it's still, it, long-term planning. <laughs> what is being done to protect the investment that we make in the school district when the town becomes empty because it's now a pipeline? Thank you. Michael Dean, a 16-year resident of the borough. Um, 
in addition to all the questions I've already sent to Dr. Masuda, and I appreciate his response, and I hope he shares it all with you for your next presentation, um, I'd like to hear some other things answered at the next public presentation. Uh, the investment in Kruger Field, could you please uh, tell us at that time the status of uh, all these past troubles with Madison, and is this a good place to put an investment? Does Madison still have a right to uh, essentially um, nullify some of, our, some of all of our investment there? In the high school uh, field presentation, could you please break down the cost of drainage, break it out from the total cost? Could you also please provide the cost to sod, grass sod, that whole area one time, and then we can do a cost analysis, every individual here, as to whether the, it pays to just put sod down twice or three times a year for the life of the field. So in the presentation in 2006, there was a, a new uh, artificial field put in Hoover. Um, could you tell us if, in the next presentation if it's been replaced yet, how long it lasted, and how long you uh, would uh, expect these other artificial fields you're talking about to last. Um, seems like the high school has a, a huge population and you're really not addressing their auditorium needs. Maybe the bigger auditorium is a better place there. Could you also address that, uh, you mentioned ADA, could you also address uh, what construction will tr trigger more uh, ADA compliance? Um, I would like to be able to sit home in the future and, and watch uh, this and after presentation by the school board on television. It's about time to do that. I see other towns, but I can't see our own. Um, Milton, and it probably goes to Washington Avenue too. Somebody already mentioned it, I'm going to mention it differently. We have way too much ground cover there. I hope your presentation shows that uh, this is going to be on a uh, second floor. Field drainage in Milton. I know, I got to talk this. Could you also please tell us about future projects that um, you may be uh, see as a need over the, down the line so we can look at the bigger picture. My name is Jane Devlin and I live in Chatham Township. Thank you for giving us the opportunity tonight for this discussion and forum. A lot of focus is on the auditorium or performing arts center. The name is just semantics. Let's just call it the auditorium. I think everyone stays calm about that. But let's not overlook this referendum does include improvements to sports, STEM, classroom, which could lead to curriculum enhancements. It seems to me like it's a win-win for all the special interest groups that goes before the board and for less than a dollar a day. So the Board of Education has listened to us over the years and has said now it's time to act. I support this referendum. Um, you said you're taking some questions. I would just ask the question. No, actually, Jane, I, we said we're not going to take questions. Oh, no, so not tonight. I mean, I bet you're jotting down. Growing up again. Oh, we're jotting questions. Yes. Um, if you could just jot down, you had mentioned, Dr. Lasusa had mentioned about the current CMS auditorium, some other things that would be used for if the referendum went through. I didn't understand if it would be. All of those things, or just some of those things, and I would like to ask what would happen to the Chatham High School Auditorium, like what other uses could that be put good use to? And just on a little uh, uh, lighter note, could we get the graduation back home if we had a larger auditorium instead of at the men in arena? Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Hi, I'm April Pagash. I live at 60 Washington Avenue in the borough. Um, I am a supporter of arts and schools. My son was in the Washington Avenue Players and loved it, and I spent a lot of hours helping with it. But as far as this referendum goes, I think it's a question of priorities and fiscal responsibility. I think expanding classroom space is a wonderful use of our money and a additional tax money. 
I think that's what the Board of Education should be raising money for. I fully support that. <laughs> However, I think bundling it with a very expensive performing arts center is at best confusing and at worst conniving. I think you're trying to group things that are wholly unrelated. I think if people want an art center, I think that's a great way to bring in private donors. If they can raise the money for it, I think that's wonderful. But I don't think it's what the Board of Education should be spending money on. My other concern is with the high school fields. I think they definitely need help. They're sort of sad. But I don't know that uh, crumb rubber turf is a good option. There's a lot of anecdotal evidence right now linking exposure to crumb rubber turf to a much higher incidence of childhood cancer. A lot of schools are actually moving away from that and districts around the country are moving away from the crumb rubber turf because nobody's really sure yet. But it does seem like especially soccer players who are playing on this turf have a much higher risk of cancer. So I'm just wondering if the board has at all looked into that or considered that. Thank you very much. I was going to read my 10 questions from Monday night's meeting, but in the interest of time, I won't. Um, I'd just like to say three things. One is um, Chatham Public Schools are not specialized schools. They're not intended to provide, a, they are intended to provide a broad education covering all subjects. If a parent would like to send their child to a private school that specializes in the performing arts, they have every right to do so. The Chatham Public Schools are not intended for that purpose. Number two, has the idea of a PAC center been proposed to either the borough or township councils as part of the municipal budget as opposed to the school budget? And number three, just a final comment, over the past few years we've all seen an increase in the number of school shootings and tragic events that have happened in schools across our country. In my view, putting an 1100 seat performing arts center on school grounds and then opening it up to outside groups pose an increase in completely unnecessary risk to the students. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Kathy, Kathy Farnham, could you raise your hand? Again, make up promises beyond Kathy, depending on how the time goes, just so everybody knows who. Thank you. Hi. Uh, my name is Laura Lyson. I live at 22 Yale Street in the borough. Um, I'm here as a mother of a two-year-old and also I'm a school psychologist. Um, I really support everything you talked about in the referendum for the most part, but it sounds like there's a lot of upgrades needed, but I'm here today to talk about um, expanding schools. And I'll make my comments brief. Um, I'm in support for expanding schools, uh, particularly for full-day kindergarten. It's a necessary action to support ever-increasing, ever-challenging curriculum demands, as you all know, um, brought to us by the Common Core. Um, children need more than three hours of kindergarten to have get the foundational skills needed as they go into first and second grade. Um, standards are much different than they were 20, 30 years ago. It's also my opinion that children need adequate opportunities for incidental learning through play in kindergarten, which I really do not feel can be achieved in less than three hours a day, especially when you have all the other things that you need to get done in that time. I understand the lack of space, I really do, as a school psychologist. I spent seven years in a converted locker room as my office space, <laughs> a little drain behind me. I really do get it. I'm not just one-sided in this, but I urge you to take the opportunity that seems like it's presented itself to you um, and take the steps to give our kindergartners what they need and not just what's the state minimum. Um, thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, uh, Joe Bezzarellian, Fairfax Terrace Township. I have a lot of thoughts, but really I'll just share the one that I have the greatest conviction in in regards to this whole uh, concept, and it's that our investment in science, technology, engineering and math is absolutely critical. I think if there's one thing that I believe we should be world class in, as for our children, for our town, for our nation, it's STEM. I'm glad to see there is some provision for additional facilities along with this. this that provision is what gets me over the hump 
it makes me think I can support the whole thing. Again, it's a lot of different, somewhat conflicting thoughts. That's what gets me there. Um, and I hope that there's also, beyond this, there's also a headroom within residents and voters and parents' willingness to continue to fund improvements in our curriculum and uh, in our instruction in that area, but all of our areas. So capital versus continuing uh, operating funding uh, is, is also something that I hope you, you weigh carefully. But, but that's my really my single greatest conviction point is that the STEM is part of this is really critical. Thank you. Thank you, John. Hi, good evening. My name is Mike Morrissey. I live on Chatham Street in the borough. Uh, I'm here because I support the full uh, day kindergarten initiative um, and, and hence support the um, expansion of um, the classrooms in the elementary schools. My, um, I moved here with my family about two years back uh, in part because of the great reputation of the Chatham um, schools. And when we found out that Chatham High School was named first in the state recently, my wife and I were very excited and you know, certainly want to thank the board and thank the superintendent for doing their part in making that happen. But the notion that, you know, my wife and I studied each town and determined which towns had full day kindergarten and which towns didn't is simply untrue. And I think that was something that may have been raised in a previous meeting on the subject. The, the, the point that I came up here to say is that 80% of the towns in the state have full day kindergarten. When I found out that Chatham didn't, I couldn't believe it. Um, you know, this is something that we, we desperately need. I know that one of the previous commenters mentioned about waiting lists um, in theater-related activities. My understanding is that there's waiting lists with respect to getting kids in the kindergarten that they're supposed to be based in their neighborhood, and that, not, and that there's some uh, possibility that that might not happen in the future. We need these uh, elementary classrooms. We need them now, and I think the full-day kindergarten is a very important thing for this town, not simply to, um, you know, simply to, simply to stay at its stature as a, as a school district. Um, you know, we can't rest on our laurels, and, and simply because uh, we have a great reputation now doesn't guarantee one in the future, and I think we have to invest in the infrastructure. Uh, eight classroom seems very necessary, and so I hope that that's a priority uh, with respect to the, um, referendum and I really encourage the board to put the referendum forward. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Melvin Polachek. I live in the township, uh, Hickory Place. Uh, certainly the term performing arts center sounds like it's controversial and I'm not surprised because it's clear to me that all across America where there are budget constraints, the first thing is lay off the art teachers. We don't need a music program. We have a band and an orchestra. Why do we need both? I'd like to say, having been a music student and uh, the grandfather of two kids in this system who are both athletes and performers, uh, that the wider variety of things you can offer students to be engaged in and theater people are really engaged, and musicians are really engaged, the less opportunity they have to be victim to the kind of destructive things that can happen to children in school. And my last and only other point is, and this may be theoretical, but to say we don't need performing arts is not a more valid statement than to say my children will not be better citizens because of the football team. Nobody says cut down the size of the football team. And I just read in the New York Times that there are football coaches making more than college presidents. Well, I understand it's commercially more viable. It isn't more important to America that we have sports than we have music and arts and painting and drawing and all those things and dance. So I'm urging you to pass all of it. And certainly if you're going to cut down anything, cut down a little bit across the board if you have to. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you.
Good evening. My name is Kathy Farnan. I live 11 Joanna Way in the township. I moved to Chatham almost 10 years ago with three daughters in the school system who are now almost all finished at Chatham and uh, will not benefit from any of these current plans. However, as many of you know, I've been involved in the PTOs at both the middle school and the high school over the last several years and have personally observed both the needs of our district and heard the complaints, many complaints, of the many parents within our town about the state of our buildings, our athletic fields, and our auditoriums. Having lived in many different places around the country as well as within the world, our facilities also ranked number one in the state are certainly not number one in comparison to any other facilities my kids have ever been in. You may not know that I've also been the president of the Chatham Newcomers Club for four of the last seven years. The Chatham Newcomers Club consists of over 175 families that join our organization every year and uh, about 200 families move into Chatham every year and come into our school district. The Newcomers Club in our fabulous town, whether new families from New York City or established families from other parts of the country, have consistently been surprised that our schools have leaky roofs, duct tape seats, a lack of viable athletic fields or unsafe bleachers. And we, the Chatham Newcomers Club, are very, very interested in upgrading our school facilities in maintaining the value of our school system and we are also in support of potentially being able in the future to offer full day kindergarten when the school district has the space available to do so thank you very much for all the time and consideration that you put into this effort we applaud you thank you If you can, if you can just self regulate and maybe keep it to two minutes each so we can get to everybody, including Mr. Quinn, who will be the last person that will take. Please sign in, those of you who didn't sign the sheet. Or sign in after you leave the podium. Sure. Um, thank you very much. Um, my name is Nicole Kagan. I have uh, two children um, in the schools, the middle school, and one coming into the elementary school. I live in the borough on Elm Place. Um, I just wanted to point out one um, contingent here that I haven't heard being represented, and that's the single most important person in our child's lives outside of ourselves, those are the teachers in our schools. And I want to um, support, again, the expansion of the elementary schools to, to give credit to some of those teachers that are really um, teaching and operating in some incredibly tight spaces. We really have kids shoehorned in these elementary schools, and we really owe it to these very important people in our kids' lives, outside of ourselves, those teachers, to give them the space and the and the, the means that they have to teach our children the way that they're due. So I fully support um, all the referendums, but wanted to point out the um, the um, what our teachers are going through. The other thing I wanted to make a point that I hope the board um, keeps in mind with regard to the um, turfing of the fields. Um, I understand and I, I love baseball, many people do, but as a parent of three boys, I see boys go from sport to sport to sport, and I wouldn't want the Board of Ed to prioritize one sport over another, and I would hope that a multi-purpose situation would be viewed very strongly, because trends in sports change, and I do feel that making the best use of the limited space we have would be the best for most kids. And as last on the Performing Arts Center, as someone who works in the Performing Arts and has done so for the last 25 years, you know, it's, you know, I have only sport boys and it pains me, but, you know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, it's really, it's an incredible, it's an incredible thing that children have by participating in Performing Arts. And as somebody who worked in the New York Public Schools in an arts program, kids outperform their peers and standardized tests when they're exposed to arts and education at early years, and I would hope that we can provide whatever we can to keep that going. So thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Cheryl Whitney. I live on Fairview Avenue in the borough, and I'm the son, mother of three boys, um, two at Washington Avenue School, one in first grade, one in second grade, and a four-year-old. And I come out in support of the expansion of the elementary schools and specifically full day kindergarten. At this point, this will not affect me because my, um, by the time full day kindergarten would be implemented, my children would be up in higher grades. But um, as a parent, I can tell you that I paid for private kindergarten for my first grader and my second grader. 
and I thought it was a fabulous experience for them. And I wish all children in the district could have the same experiences with the full day kindergarten that my kids did. And I see some of my friends who, um, who did not have similar experiences in public school, and that's not a reflection on the teachers, but just on the amount of time that these kids had in the classroom and the amount that they need to accomplish in that short period of time. And so I would just encourage the district to do the expansion and to, to allow all children in the district to have the same opportunities that my kids did. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Jen Clark. I'm at 37 Gerard in the borough. I'm a founding member of Encore, produced five Washington Avenue school musicals, and in my third year as co-producer at the Chatham High School Theater Department. I'm obviously a huge supporter of theater, music, chorus, and the arts, as well as a supporter of athletics. My children are not only involved in the performing arts, but play seventh grade field hockey and fourth grade flag football. I agree that the renovations to the CHS backfield and bleachers, et cetera, at Cooper Field are incredibly important. But my focus is on the importance of being ADA compliant, American Disability Act compliant. Many, grand, many parents, grandparents, and senior citizens attend a variety of performances and concerts in our CHS auditorium. One of our most popular senior citizens events is the senior dinner taking place tomorrow night. Upwards of 100 senior citizens attend the final dress rehearsal of the fall play and spring musical, followed by a dinner organized by volunteer parents served by National Honor Society and Key Club students with our cast reading, mingling, and answering questions. According to the 2010 ADA Standards of Accessible Design, Title III, Places of Public Accommodation, there are three main areas we should be addressing, seating, hearing, and access. We should have seven wheelchair accessible seating spaces as part of our 732 seats in the CHS auditorium, but we currently have two. Those wheelchair accessible seats should also be dispersed around the performance viewing area to give wheelchair spectators the same viewing choices as other spectators. Currently, the two wheelchair accessible seats in the CHS, CHS auditorium are both in the same row, row H. Also, according to ADA standards, we are required to have assistive listening systems when audible communication is being utilized in the performance space. 25% of our receivers should be hearing aid compatible, and according to our seating numbers, we should have 27 assistive, assistive listening receivers. We currently have none. With regards to access, there are no handicapped parking spots convenient to the CHS auditorium entrances, and the depressed accessible curbs are not near the front entrance doors. Renovating the CHS auditorium to be ADA compliant is helpful, but not enough. We don't have safe, we don't have a safe scene shop, appropriate costume changing areas, fitting orchestra pit, et cetera, you know the list. The current CHS auditorium space, even if renovated, would not allow for those improvements, nor any room for growth. Having our current CHS auditorium and the new Performing Arts Center be ADA compliant promotes welcoming everyone in our community to be in the audience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. These are our last two speakers, the young man and the not so young man. <laughs> not as young man now. No, 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 we're cutting it off. In fact, I want to cut it off after Mr. Quinn. No, no. Hi, I'm Quinn Tamaro, and I'm an eighth grader uh, here at CMS. I've lived in Chatham my whole life. I live near the library, um, and I wrote this with my co-member, Bradford Nos, back there. It's his birthday. Um, What's his name? Since he's helping us out. Bradford Nos. Thank you. Uh, and uh, Brad, here's me. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Brad. Uh, so I'm speaking for both of us right now. Um, so we, we recently, we're both on crew, and uh, we recently got a new lighting board. Um, I'm the one mainly in charge of lighting crew, so that helped me out a lot. Um, but the sound, the soundboard, uh, that was only solving the tip of the iceberg, because the soundboard is extremely old, and is actually the reason that the microphone was malfunctioning before. Um, <laughs> so. Um, Quinn, were you setting this up from the very beginning? <laughs> <laughs> I think Quinn's a plant. Um, so between extremely old equipment, uh, like small seating area, not enough to fit the entire, all three grades, um, and uh, as you guys can see probably if you look up, a lot of those lights in the strip that's uh, on above you guys is dead, um, and that's because of 
the electrical electrical problems, and also we don't have the right kind of bolts. I'm not sure if that changed, but but they're secure, right? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, one, one fell one fell last year during the during the band concert. Did it but, fall over there mostly? No, it was over there. Okay. Um, it was farther back too. Um, but so there, so we actually changed them last year, and already more than half of them are dead, uh, which is a problem. We're gonna have to change them again. And um, so overall, between all those things, uh, I'm sure that almost all of the middle school students would love to have a new performing arts uh, center. Excellent. Thank you, Sam. I appreciate it. Guys, well, thank you for your help tonight, and happy birthday. Nubiel, please sit down. We're not gonna get to you. No, I do not. Not tonight. We, we, I've been saying for the last 45 minutes when we were cutting it off. You jumped up at the end. Please have a seat. So, Dr. Lasuza gave me two statistics. I'm older than the average school building in Chatham. I was built before Milton. <laughs> this potential referendum accomplishes two major goals, which we have long needed to address in the school district of the Chathams. Number one provide additional space for student activities to alleviate serious overcrowding. And number two, improve safety and access for students and others using school facilities by providing an ADA compliant space and an ADA compliant Cougar Field bleachers. Referendum projects will benefit all ages from the youngest kindergartners by providing flexibility for full day kindergarten to the oldest citizens by providing ADA access. The referendum will provide benefits to all children in the school districts by providing expanded classroom space for the arts, STEM, potentially FDK, and improved sports facilities. Reconfiguring this auditorium and adding a performing arts center will allow Chatham Middle School to add back activities crowded out in recent years such as shop, technology facilities, and computer labs. It provides space for theater training not currently possible because of space constraints such as training in dance, practice spaces for orchestra, jazz, piano, shop space to safely build theater sets. Relocating the Board of Ed offices to this facility provides Chatham Township with increased flexibility to consider long-range efficiency plans for its own office space and lowers the Board of Education office rental cost. As a member of the Board of Trustees of Chatham Ed Cal Education Foundation, a member of Chatham Education and Theater Boosters, of Chatham Athletic Boosters, and a supporter of Chatham Athletic Foundation, I can assure you that we will be raising private funds to supplement public investment in expanded facilities. There is a long tradition in Chatham of private support for public education. In summary, the referendum addresses many of the concerns that I have long had since my family first moved to Chatham Borough in 1996 and then to Chatham Township in 2006. During my tenure on the Board of Education, serving as finance chair and actively participating in other committees, I had significant concerns about the adequacy of school district facilities. This referendum finally addresses many of those concerns and I fully support the Board of Education in further developing the details of this initiative. Thank you. Thank you.